and welcome to the channel again. Um, c congratulations for if you've done this, got getting through the last video, which was um, long and quite dull, I think, having watched it through myself. So I'm on holiday, as you know, and um, I'm in a flat now, uh, putting in a hot tub. And uh, evidence of gas bonding. and into the house. Having said that, there's two there's two gas intakes here. All we need to do is if that turns out to be the if that turns out to be the gas to our flat, then we need to run a gas bond from here into here. I'm not sure which gas belongs to the flat and therefore which one's bonded. I'm gonna have to carry out a R2 test on the bonding before I start on this uh, hot tub install. I couldn't see any uh, evidence of bonding under the sink, so we're gonna have to do our two tests on that too. Um, what I'm looking at now is the MET. I've got a 16, uh, a six, and another six. So I guess they might be, they might be bonding cables, six nil bonding cables. It's a TNC supply and a 16th edition uh, board here. Um, my pack out boxes, in here I've got my Wagos, my wall anchors, I've got a bin of screws and um, cable clips and SWA glands. My, I'm going to not say my word trusty again, but my ratchet driver. Uh, one of these little uh, whisker boxes, ratchet driver bits. Coming across to this one, got the R2 test leads. I've got my SDS um, Plus, uh, 2.5 mil light up, another drill, IP rated uh, socket. Then I've got my drills. Drills over there. My drills, my tool check plus and resin, I don't know what's in there. Coming across to here, my testing kit, tester, and, and all my hand tools. My drills, the big tools, the big tools are in here. And away goes and so forth in here. Right, so the gas bonding now. I've, I've locked my R2 test lead onto the back of the cooker where the gas comes in and we've got 0.63 on that so it's not looking like we've got any bonding there. I've scratched off some of the, the oxidation on the copper pipe. That's zero, zero, zero for that. Uh, well, today is going to be uh, 39 degrees, so uh, we want the freezers and everything working. Just one thing, look, these are the old, must have been the old supplies with, with the old lead covered, or whatever it is, uh, the cables. Uh, that's the earthing to the, to the tube there, to the conduit. And there's earthing on that one too. See, this one is where we're going to take the feed from and um, I need to find out which breaker is going to isolate that point. Okay so that's correct. Two lights are light, that's correct. Um, but the breaker it's on is a 32 amp. Um, so what we're going to have coming off of here is going to be a radial uh, 2.5 so that is going to have to be down rated. It's a Proteus, it's this one. It's the Proteus there so got everything else on that's fine for the fridges. I just need an M2 uh, 20 amp probably be alright 16 amp would be better so I've probably got one of them in the van.
day. Safe isolation. I'm just going to check that this... Um, Yeah, the fridge is still on if I disconnect the... Right, so... And that's working. Nothing there. Oh, nothing... Oh, still that's in there. Nothing there. And... Nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, so... Although I haven't isolated the whole of the board, I have isolated my end of it here. Setting on 500 volts. Test. 0.03 mega ohms. So, that might be the RCD in line there, causing that. I think take out the RCD, there's no need for it. So I'm going to take out this RCD because it's already RCD protected on the board and this is quite an old unit. There's 30 milliamp trip current which is better off just with one keeping that going. I'm going to take a new feed from this socket here. Um, I think I'll do a test on this socket to see if it doesn't need replacing. Um, yeah, I'll do a ZS test on that socket. So we're carrying out the ZS test now on that nearby socket, 0.76 on one of them. And could be the same. Okay, I've taken the uh, RCD, the old RCD out, now I'm going to do another insulation resistance test. And as you can see, uh, we've got perfect readings. So on the garden end of the, of the system, a bit less. But we've got electronic switch gear up there, you see, so I'm thinking that that's what's going to be causing that. So we have to go and disconnect the electronic switch gear. Here's the other side of the wall. Um, the armoured cable goes into uh, this junction box here. Um, I don't know at the moment whether it's uh, earth to the sheath. Um, so I'm going to bring my cable through here and along the wall and it's going to go through there into the um, into the IP rated socket back out and then join onto this flex. I'm not going to change this flex, the reason being that this is very close up to the cement and I can't, I don't really want to disturb this at all, um, other than maybe put an earth tab on it, um, some um, supplementary bonding onto it, uh, or main bonding onto it, sorry, main bonding wouldn't it be? The, um, the high tough is through, I free, we bored the hole and High tough is through there. I have a problem here though, in that um, I screwed the Petrus box in and it just fell out. So, with all those on. So, um, what I do in this instance is revert to my resin um, protocol. Okay, so here's the resin, and I'm going to basically rebuild the wall using resin.
it's uh, half an hour later, I've now got um, my mini whisker box with the connections through to the new outside position and then it comes back again and so the the ZS test on this before I clear out. Um, it will take a good hour to clear up the Hoover and everything. It'll be about 2.8 something. Point 0.75, there we are. 